Stangibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Mobile Someplace, uh, with a little bit of a conundrum now, a little bit of a problem in regards to grounding the mobile antenna. I just got rid of big number eight for reasons which uh, I have outlined in other videos in favor of little number nine which has probably got about one-fourth the metal mass that big number eight had. That means it's got a substantially less effective antenna ground for unbalanced antennas. Unbalanced antennas must operate against something like a substantial ground in order to function. They need something to push off of. Now, a, a balanced antenna like a dipole or a loop does not need uh, this ground to operate against. It's good to have a radio frequency and electrical ground, but it, the antenna does not require it to operate against. The only way out of that, really, uh, is to have a half wavelength antenna, which is impractical in mobile HF applications. So big number eight is gone, and we now have little number nine and an immense challenge for yours truly, and uh, I consider myself somewhat of an antenna expert, but this one really has me thinking, because while this uh, truck here had a big, substantial, effective ground because of its mass, this little thing has almost none. Now, one uh, possible solution is to use one of those loop antennas. Do you remember the old AEA ISO loop? Something like that might work. The problem is the wind load driving down the freeway at 75 mile an hour here in the in here in South Dakota that's our speed limit into a headwind of say a sustained headwind of 30 mile an hour. Well, you can see right now that we're dealing with a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane blowing against this AEA ISO loop type antenna. And I just don't know if an antenna like that would, be, would withstand that kind of wind load. And even if it were guyed in such a way that it did, I'll bet the noise that it made would be just hideous and distracting. So I've got some choices here. The main reason that I want to operate HF Mobile, there are two reasons. One of them is to listen. I do a lot more listening than transmitting, so I don't need that great an antenna just to listen. The other thing that I'd like to use it for is in case there is an emergency, like I break down on the road. Well, if I break down on the road, I'm not going to be moving. So I'm not really going to be mobile. I'm going to be portable. And there are antennas that you can use, portable antennas that have little tripods and things like that that you can toss outside and, and use in an emergency. And I would think that that would probably be the best solution here. It could also double as a portable antenna uh, for locations where I might be staying, motels or cottages or cabins. Of course, then there's the completely unrelated problem of affording all of this travel and my old carcass physically enduring the rigors of it. But I would like to go home and see my dear old mom and dad for Christmas. My mother, 91 years old, just survived open heart surgery. And my dad, age 90, and they're both probably sharper than I am. Which is uh, not, not saying much, I guess. But at least I have some ideas here. But the big challenge here is the fact that a mobile antenna or any unbalanced antenna has to have a ground to operate against. And at HF, that is the ham radio band's 
basically from 160 to 10 meters. That is an immense challenge. In fact, on 160 and 80, it's a real, real challenge, a, a monumental challenge. But if there weren't any challenges, no progress would ever be made, especially with a slowing down mind such as yours truly now has. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, saying 73 from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Advertising, and so long.